Hey everybody, one of the biggest questions we get asked here at E3 Aviation Association is what airplanes do we own and fly every day? So today, we're actually gonna talk about the Conquest II. Let's get started, welcome. Hey everybody, and welcome. Today we're gonna to talk a little bit about our Conquest II. You know, we get a lot of questions and uh, just a lot of inquiries about what aircraft do we fly at E3 Aviation and why do we fly them, what our missions are, what do we like about these particular planes and aircraft that, that we fly and own. So I'm gonna go ahead and spend some time here. I do wanna say though that I'm not a broker, you know, I'm a pilot. I'm not a mechanic. So what we want to do is not get into a lot of specifications. I'll go through some of that with you. But today was just more of a, a general overview of the aircraft and why do we like it? How do we use it? And uh, what we think are best about the aircraft. Now, we do have some very specific missions and why we love this aircraft. And I, I think this plane is an absolute hidden jewel. Um, obviously, we have the big Honeywell Garrett engines on it. Um, the range is outstanding, 475 gallons of fuel that we can put in it. So. Our mission was uh, important. The mission was that we needed to be able to fly on average 14 to 1500 nautical. We didn't want to have to stop, but more importantly is weight, the cabin size, and then there was a key issue that had to do with our production crew that is behind the cameras right now. And we're going to talk about this a little bit more when we get up to the nose of the aircraft, but with equipment, we needed more of a volume when it came to our uh, storage and things like that. So when we get to the nose, we'll talk a little bit about that. So we usually like to fly with three, four, five people and then want to be able to put in, you know, six or seven. There are nine seats in, uh, in this plane. We have one out of it right now. Uh, but that's kind of, uh, so it's a pretty big cabin. I, I will say that uh, people think or they um, misunderstand that this is not a 421 with uh, turbines on it. The 421 is actually the Conquest II. The 421 is a smaller cabin and it has the PT6A uh, engines on, the, on that one. So this is the Titan. This is a much, much bigger cabin on it, bigger aircraft in general. So uh, that's one big thing about this. And then again, we're gonna talk about how much volume because we needed to be able to put cranes and things in this aircraft for our production crew who is behind the cameras right now. So that's uh, some of the big things. Now let's get into some of our experiences. You know, flying this aircraft is just a dream. We can climb out pretty fast. We're usually at about 35,000 feet. Um, if we're fully loaded, and that 35,000 feet is usually like a few people in the aircraft, full fuel with some luggage, and uh, we'll be at 35,000 feet, we'll go right up there. Now, if we do have a lot of people in it and more weight, we'll usually get up to about 32, 33,000 feet, and we'll stay there for about 45 minutes, and then we'll jump up to 35,000 feet. Our range has just been awesome. I mean, uh, you can look at a lot of the publications, over 2,000 nautical on it, but we've had many instances, you know, we can come back from Napa, to Fort Lauderdale Executive, where we're based here, um, with a little bit of a good tailwind, nonstop from Napa, California to Fort Lauderdale. Of course, not every time and going west, we don't get that. But we just recently did a trip where ATC took us from Boston out towards Ohio, down the west side of, uh, of Atlanta, down the west side of Florida, and then into Fort Lauderdale Executive. And we still landed with over an hour of fuel. So to me, for a turboprop to fly as fast as we can, I think that's outstanding. That's why I think this is kind of a little hidden jewel and you're doing that with a good load of people and, and a lot of weight in it. All right, so let's go ahead and take a walk around and we'll talk a little bit more about the specifications and a little bit more about the aircraft that we actually love. Let's go ahead and dig in. All right, so we're gonna move over here to the engines and uh, I tell you, I've flown King Airs, Jets, Citations, uh, you name it. and. Um, I love the Garrett, or I should say Garrett Honeywells, um, depending on how you want to approach it. And these are the TPE 331s, uh, 635, 636 to be exact, shaft horsepower. And um, I just love these engines. I think the performance on them is outstanding. The range, the efficiency on these engines are just uh, uh, great. And of course, we have our Hartzell props here. And uh, our props actually have less than 50 hours on these props. We went to brand new ones, not overhaul. So that's great. Now, I do want to say on these uh, Garrett's, I know that there's this, uh, I don't want to say misconception because they are allowed. Um, but the nice thing about the Conquest here is that this is usually running on the ground. We're at 
Now, unlike uh, maybe some MU2s or jet streams or other ones, when they start these up, they're usually running somewhere in the 80 to 90 percent, and they are allowed on the ground. One thing I love about the Conquest here is, uh, again, we're on the ground at 60 percent. We get cleared for takeoff, then we come up to 100 percent and uh, take the runway. So these engines are absolutely outstanding. Our climb performance is great. I'll go over some specs and we'll talk a little bit more about it. And again, I'm talking about our aircraft here. You know, there's a bunch of them with you know, strakes and different things on them, but uh, I'm only talking about what we get out of, that, out of this airplane. So these engines have just been outstanding. I love them. They're uh, pretty much hands off. Now, this airplane and these engines have kind of their own fuel controller, their own computer and things like that. So it's certainly not FADEX. Um, I call it kind of a, a pseudo FADEX type system that uh, the fuel control and the computer pretty much does all the work for us when we're uh, up at altitude and, and we're flying. So uh, again, Garrett Honeywell's TPE 331s, uh, great engines, love this on this airplane. And uh, let's go over and talk about the nose. All right, great. So I want to talk a little bit about the nose because I have to tell you that one of the reasons that we bought this particular aircraft is because of the guys that are actually behind the cameras and all the equipment right now that are shooting this. We have a whole production crew at E3 Aviation Association and all our other E3s. So our production crew, we needed something that we could fit uh, number one, a lot of weight, but more importantly, it wasn't even the weight. It was the length that we needed in the uh, baggage area and in those of the aircraft because we have big camera cranes and jibs and all kinds of stuff that uh, we need to be able to fly with. So this baggage area goes all the way up here and we can put a six foot crane inside of here. Obviously it's broken down into its case and stuff, but we open up these doors. There's another one on the other side. We can open these up and literally put this giant crane in here. Now, here's the other thing I love about this, this plane, 600 pounds. We can put 600 pounds of, of weight in here. Obviously, we got to have the plane loaded the way that we need to have it loaded, but 600 pounds goes in here, six feet of, of baggage, and uh, very few aircraft, even our Citation, uh, didn't have that much length in the nose. So really awesome from that standpoint. Um, of course, beefy nose gear. We talked a little bit about the trailing length, uh, the nose gear here. We're going to get on here and talk about it. And I, we did something really cool here that um, I thought was unique, and I wish they sold these, but... You know, on, on these aircraft, and quite a bit of them, we have these little tabs here that come up when the gear shuts, and there's a tab here that grabs the gear and pulls the door shut and stuff. And a lot of the aircraft have these. Now what happens is a lot of these new electric tugs and things where they put a strap up around here and all that kind of stuff, a lot of times they'll put it in here and just bust these tabs right off. So one thing we suggest is paint that tab red like we did here. So we painted that tab red so the line guys actually see that. And then we just took a pedo cover there was rubber that goes onto a, a pedo inlet. We heated it up, spread it out so that we could put it right on that tab just like that. Cool little uh, interesting tidbit that you can use for, if you, anybody has gears like this um, or anything that these electric tugs with the strap will, will hit. But a uh, nice thing here is here at Banyan, Banyan Air Service here in South Florida, these guys know enough the, not to do that. And on our aircraft, they're always using uh, the regular tow bar on our aircraft. But, uh, so beefy gear, we have upgraded to uh, the low voltage, um, I should say low draw uh, taxi light. Landing lights are out on the wings. We've got the executive landing lights. We'll talk about that a little bit more. So anyway, that's the, uh, that's the nose area and uh, nose gear area. So let's move on to the other side of the plane. All right, great. So here we are on the other side of the plane. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the um, anti-ice and de-icing equipment on this plane. Uh, of course, we have boots, and the way the boots on the main wings and the stabilizer and the tab, they, they basically are all boots, and that runs when we blow the boots, the wings blow first, and it's on a time delay, then the tail blows, and then uh, about 30 seconds later, it all sucks it back down. So that's how the boots alternate. Now, on the props, of course, we have heat on the, the actual props themselves, and these do alternate. So there's a little timer in there, and when you put the boots on, you'll see it click. And every time it's clicking, it's going to a different prop and, and it's kind of cycling through that way. And then on the inlets uh, for the engines, uh, these are heated too. Of course, it's bleed air. We're bleed air heated on, on these inlets. So, um, and then we didn't talk about the pedo tubes, but the uh, same thing, those are heated the normal way. So that's how the uh, anti-ice works on this plane. Again, pretty simple, uh, anti-ice, de-ice. And uh, let's go ahead and we'll go out to talk about the lights on this because we did upgrade the lights on uh, this aircraft. So let's take a peek at that. And if we go up to the, the wing here, 
we have what's called the executive wingtip lights. You know, in the original aircraft, there's usually a big light that's underneath here, and you know, we did this upgrade, and you can see there's a panel here when they did the upgrade, the big STC, and the, the light would come down like this, and there was all kinds of problems and things, and just the, the design in itself would slow the aircraft down. Well, we upgraded to the executive wingtip lights that are all integrated into the actual wings here, so really great uh, landing lights really bright they're just awesome and uh we've just been loving these systems so let's go ahead and uh walk around to the back side of the plane now okay so on this particular plane which is another reason we love it we're down here in south florida and as you know it's hot most of the time <laughs> so you know we have the um ground ac on this plane and um it's just great. It's uh, just enough to cool the aircraft before we jump on it. Uh, you know, just having it run just for five minutes is uh, awesome. It's great and uh, cools the airplane on with uh, a card on there. And then of course, when the airplane's running, uh, we can run that AC off the engine power. One thing I love about this one, it draws so little and because of the Garrett Honeywell engines, um, we can actually run this AC on takeoff. Um, I don't, but uh, it's uh, an item that you actually can do in this airplane, unlike a lot of airplanes where you're required to turn the air, the air, air conditioner off on takeoff, we can actually run it in here. Um, I'm a little conservative, so I still shut down a lot of those things, um, but this is the intake um, for that, and then underneath here is a little drain for condensation and things for the AC. So in the E3 Aviation Association airplane, <laughs> ground AC, South Florida, we love it. Let's go ahead and uh, keep going. Okay, so here in the tail section, I mean, it's nothing unusual here. I mean, everything's pretty much standard back here, uh, except for that beautiful E3 Aviation logo that we have on the tail. But 8.8 uh, 8 Golf Whiskey here is pretty standard. We got our trim tabs. Um, no, no real upgrades on any of the lights or anything back here, so it's all uh, pretty standard on the, on the tail here. You know, we were thinking about getting the strakes that you would see here and maybe the wing tips and stuff like that. But uh, for how we fly this plane and what we do, we just can't seem to be able to justify it. Um, I would love to have it because it is cool as hell when the plane has those strakes on it. But uh, we just haven't done it on, on this plane yet. But uh, let's move on. All right, so let's take a minute and take a peek at this landing gear. Um, I'd have to say on all the aircraft that we've owned, probably one of my favorite landing gears, trailing link landing gear, same beefy landing gear that's on the Citation jets and the Citations and the bigger Citations. So it's uh, hydraulically actuated. It's smooth. I mean, the uh, trailing link landing gear on this thing is so smooth. And it has uh, nitrogen bottles, so the compressed bottles. So if we have to blow down for an emergency, the, we can do that. So um, again, love this gear. It uh, makes the landings just so pleasurable and uh, just gives you that little extra confidence. So probably one of my favorite on all our aircraft. All right, great. So let's talk a little bit about our panel. We uh, just had this panel upgraded. so. We're running the uh, Garmin G600s on both sides, so we got the G600 on both sides um, for, for backup. Of course, we have some backup equipment over here on this side, our horizontal, airspeed, altimeter. Um, of course, our engine instruments uh, right here in the middle. The 750XI here, we've got our 650XI here. And then we've got our autopilot here. Now, the thing about our autopilot here is uh, the S2200, is this is part of the RVSM. Uh, STC for this particular aircraft so had to have this uh, autopilot in here of course our comm systems our fire systems our radar flaps um, all of our pressurization under here down here we get our prop sinks all of our pressurization system down uh, the bottom here and then uh, of course our power levels condition levels and, and as we start this aircraft again it's not like uh, Pratt & Whitney PT6As uh, the Honeywell basically we're um, down on the stop locks and we can talk about the stop locks a little more at some time and then we're down in start stop we hit our our start buttons over here the computer takes over and uh, the aircraft starts up now we can get into our nts trucks and all that kind of stuff but just running through our standard panel right now um, and then when we're uh, ready to take off this is going to come up to full and uh, the other nice things as we go through uh, the upgrades that we have here on the panel if we go to the home of course we have our traffic system uh, we're indoors, so you don't see that train. We have three different weather systems. We have the Sirius XM weather, we have the FISB weather, and then we also have the Garmin uh, weather, which uh, the Garmin updates every five to 10 minutes, the XM every 15 minutes or so. 
and then the FISB is the standard FISB. So we literally have three different weather systems that we can uh, go with and check each one of them, and it gives us a little bit more data to know how fast a, a cell or something like that is moving. The other stuff we uh, like in here is we've got uh, a phone, so we can uh, make phone calls right from the system here through Iridium, and uh, comes right into our headsets, and then I can patch the phone calls back to passengers. So passengers can do the calls, they, I, they can dial from their app, so they have an app that they can tie into with our uh, five tour, the 510 chip that's in here. Uh, passengers can control the radio, they can do phone calls from here, they can text message uh, from here as well. So the phone system is uh, pretty cool to have on there. We also have, um, of course, text messaging. So you can do text messaging again through the app on your phone. And then um, inside here, we also have our music. So we have our XM satellite uh, radio here. And then, of course, with this panel, of course, we can do either pilot, pilot, co-pilot, pilot passengers. And this panel allows us to do all kinds of uh, great stuff in routing. So we got the XM weather in there. So the, uh, and of course, all of our charts and all of our maps. So we're loving the new 750. Um, we're probably going to end up doing two 750s here and then putting the new Garmin 85 um, uh, radar into the 750s. So that gives you a little bit of an uh, update on our panel, what we've got going on here. Another cool thing, and hopefully the cameraman can pan all the way down bottom here, but we had made a cup holder uh, laser printed, or I should say 3D printed, that has the tail number on it. Perfect for the small iPad, some pens, and cup holders. One of the biggest things, and my, probably my only complaint, uh, there are no cup holders up in front of this aircraft. You know, back in the 81 when they built it, that was not a big deal. But so we have our cup holders there, one of the most important features in the aircraft. And uh, that gives you a little bit of uh, information about the panel. So let's go ahead and we'll look at the rest of the plane. All right, great. So now that we kind of took you through uh, just a big overview of the aircraft and why we like the Conquest too, we're going to jump in the plane. We're going to get in the air, do a quick flight. Um, I already did a full walk around. I checked the fuel, went through the sumps and all that kind of stuff. But I'm going to just take you through kind of what my walk around is like. And, um, you know, of course, you can take checklist and it'll take you through every little nut and bolt and things. But my general after my first uh, flight of the day kind of walk around, I'm basically always starting here at the door and um, starting right here first the flaps and, and then the back of the engine. Now, the flaps are hydraulically driven. The engines have to be running to uh, get these flaps down. So some people and me, especially, you know, if I'm going to wash the plane or every few flights or something, I won't put the flaps up at the end of my flight. I'll keep them at 10 degrees. That way there, my next walk around, I can get in there and check all the nuts and bolts and stuff and make sure everything's good, but making sure it's uh, nice and tight here. I come to the engine and I usually have a flashlight. A really good sun flashlight gives me the ability to see up and see those turbine blades and things up. Check, make sure there's nothing in there. Um, so that's kind of how I start. Then I'm just kind of checking down here, my gear, tire pressure and things. Now I check it on both sides as I go around. But right here, what I'm doing is I'll usually run my hand underneath the brake calipers. Just kind of check it, make sure there's nothing on my hand. That means it's dry, we're good. Um, then I'll uh, come up and then do my typical walk around. And I'm not gonna go through every single nut and bolt with you guys, you all know, you know, basic walk arounds, the things we should be checking. Of course, our fuel, I already checked my fuel quantity levels and stuff when we were in the airplane, that's the first thing I do. I do on this particular plane check uh, these lights because this plane has the executive wingtip package. And these, um, these lights that are in here, sometimes they come loose and then they just kind of lay forward and they melt the plastic inside there and stuff. So this is one spot that I, I definitely always check. Of course, I got my stall vane here. I'm not gonna wiggle it around a lot, but I know it's free and clear, I can see it, that's good checking my boots, especially if I know I'm going into known icing conditions and things. So going through all the boots, checking the boots, making sure there's no holes or damages as normal as a normal walk around. Again, on this plane, I'm looking at the tire and I'm making sure I get the right pressures and things like that on it. And then I'm gonna check the door, make sure there's not a lot of play here. That's all good. And then uh, on this side is usually where I do my fuel sump. So I have two fuel sumps here, one in the belly, that's kind of the, the low point, and then two on the other side. So I'll just sump these, which I already did this morning. Then we're coming around this side. Everything looks good as normal. I'm not going to get into a lot of specifics. Again, on this side, on, on this particular aircraft, I'm checking the turbine blades because I can see the, the inlet blades here. 
and just making sure they're all good. Sometimes I need my flashlight, but I'm just rotating the blade, making sure every single one looks great, which it does. Props free, tight, sounds clear, awesome. Checking for my red dot, we're good here. And then here's where I'm checking my oil. Typically on this aircraft, I can just pull the dipstick out and it's at the level it needs to be. And we'll show you that a little bit more here in a minute. And then again, I come back, make sure my boots are good on this side. All my veins are good here. Everything looks good on this side. And then I'm checking the, the gear again on this side. Now on this side, I'm checking my, my tank because we have the blowdown tank in here for emergency gear extension. Making sure that's pressurized. Now there is a chart depending on atmospheric pressure and things like that, you need to look at and check that out. But all my hydraulics are good. I'm looking at all my, my red dots and things, making sure nothing's moved. You can see them all on the calipers, that's so good. All the safety wires are in place. Um, typical, just gear check, checking that stuff out. All right, great. Fuselage looks good. Now this is a, another area I just wanna talk about a little bit. Of course, I already took off all my, my plugs and things. And then, in this aircraft and most aircraft, this is where the batteries are. And I always have these unplugged, one for make sure that we don't drain the battery, obviously, because in this aircraft, the lights inside the cabin lights and the overhead lights and stuff will come directly off the battery. So if one of the passengers happens to leave that light on during a day or something, or just hit it, and they always do, um, it will drain the battery. So number one, I unplug them for that, but most importantly is I unplug them for security. So for theft, so nobody can steal the aircraft. They'd have to get in here, know where the batteries are, know to plug them in. Um, the other thing that I think it's important to mention is sometimes a lot of pilots will start their walk-arounds or they'll get their stuff out that they need here and they'll leave the door like that. Big no-no. Um, I've seen many pilots get in the aircraft, start up, and this is flapping because they forgot that it's uh, not properly closed and locked. Um, so whenever, um, whenever this is open, it's always open. So if I get in the plane, I can see that it's open. Throw my stuff back in here. Then the other thing that we talked about on the front gear is I built from a pedo cover with heat, just a little thing to cover the tab on the gear here because the line crews at some of these airports, when they use the electric tugs with the strap, they'll put the strap around that tab that pulls the doors up in when we uh, pull the gear up and they'll bust that off, and they bust it off all the time. Well, fortunately, only once for me, but I know a lot of uh, Conquest owners, they've had that. So I pull that off, and I do have a spare tab that I keep on the aircraft, because um, that is important. That little tab there is what grabs the two doors and pulls it up when your gear goes up. So I uh, make sure that's in place. So been through this whole area, have my keys. Then when I shut the door, I shut it, secure it, lock it, good to go. Of course, I already checked the pedos, made sure that they warm up, um, checking everything around the gear as a normal check. Again, I'm not gonna, everybody knows how to do, you know, a gear check and stuff, but I'm also checking up inside for these hinges and these bars actually pull this all up. That's a key piece, so I try to make sure I look up inside there, make sure that's all set. I know my pins are all set, the scissors is all set. Everything's good here on the gear. Problems on that. Cool. No cracks or anything in the radar dome. These should be locked um, as normal. Same thing as the other side. It's locked, closed. So I know that's good. I'm coming in here again, checking the fuselage. We got our emergency exit door on this side. All looks good. It's sealed up. Checking my boots. Same thing on this side, the gear. I'll wipe the back side of it when I get there. Checking my pressures are good. Door's good, six, seven points, all set, good on that. Fortunately, in these engines, we don't have to put oil in too much, which is, uh, which is always nice. Door, check my sumps, no leaks, nothing dripping from the bottom. Boots, looking good. I already checked all my fuel this morning. Again, checking my lights on this side. Underside looks good. Again, everybody knows how to check all your, your bolts and your pins, make sure those are all good. Flashlight again, blades look great. Okay, again, checking the flaps on this side. We already talked about them. Sometimes I leave them at 
Okay, and then on this side, we got a static port here that it's hard to see. So you just got to check the static ports. Sources, this is the air conditioning vent. Make sure there's no birds or feathers or anything in there because we are going to use the AC today, the ground AC. Again, checking my boots and all my hinges and everything's free and clear. No damage. My trim's great. Bolts are good. Um, I know we, we talked a little bit before um, that we don't have the strakes on this particular plane. So usually you'd have the strakes here that you would check if, uh, if you had those. Uh, and then my normal check. Everything's good. Pins are in. Pins look good. Everything's tight. Checking my boots on top, no damage. Okay, so that's a typical walk around, not the very first one. The very first one of the day, of course, I'm doing uh, other checks and doing my full sumps and all that kind of stuff, but that's just basically a quick walk around uh, for the second flight of the day. So let's go ahead, jump in the aircraft and we'll go for a quick flight. See you in the air. Great, hopefully you uh, enjoyed that flight. We just head up out of uh, South Florida here over the Everglades and up towards Lake Okeechobee and over the orange trees and um, just came back down. Beautiful day to fly down here in South Florida. Uh, again, this is our Conquest 2. Uh, hopefully we gave you some good general information about the plane, what we love about it, you know, what we use it for. If you want more detailed or more advanced information about this plane, the systems, avionics and stuff, make sure you come over and join our premium membership at E3 aviationassociation.com and uh, come check it out me myself the partners you know we've got some great content magazines podcasts full platform membership apps and things but uh, everything aviation that is awesome and we have a ton of fun over here with all of our member community so come on over and join us e3aviationassociation.com we'll see you in the skies on the next one so long.